Loading. Welcome to Access the Animus. Hey everyone and welcome to another video on Access the Animus. Today we are going to look at some of the news that came out in the recent days and weeks about Assassin's Creed Unity. This time it's not going to be just our normal Facebook status because this time we have video content to show you guys. The first of our two videos is dedicated to the open world of Assassin's Creed Unity and to Arno's training. Many things have been said about Paris, it will be the largest urban center ever created in the AC franchise and it will be densely populated and full of activities and landmarks to visit. We can see right now how vast is the urban area and how detailed it really is. Also we can see that during the synchronization cinematics the camera gets way farther from the protagonist than it did in previous games. Many improvements were done in terms of seamlessness. As we already know, it is possible to get inside many buildings, being them normal houses or landmarks. This of course will lead to an improved player immersion, especially considering that every interior will have a story of its own, and also that given that there are 7 districts in the game, from the religious Ile de la Cité to the artistic Quartier Latin, also the interiors will change basing on the district in which Arno is moving. As mentioned in past news, the interiors will not be empty. On the contrary, they will contain activities such as chests to open and guards to fight or to take down using the stealth approach through the stealth button. As explained many times, the combat will be based on a combination of three main elements, attack, parry and dodge. Many journalists recently confirmed what was said by the developers in the past. Attacking multiple guards is not as easy as it was in the past, both because the counter option was removed from the game and, fresh news, the guards seem to recognize repeated attacks. This means that the player will have to adapt both to the surroundings and to the specific kind of guards that he or she is facing. Other improvements that have been mentioned many times are the so-called adaptive mission mechanics. As mentioned by Alex Amancio, creative director on AC Unity, these mechanics tackle the past issues of desynchronization, game over and frustration in case of failure at the rigid objective in a mission, for example a tail mission. In Unity, instead, if the target spots are not tailing him, the mission may become a chase or a locate mission and so on. This, however, does not mean that the old-fashioned tailing missions were completely wiped out. According to recent news, one of those would imply tailing Dr. Latouche, whom you can see right now. Going back to the open world, as in previous iterations, we can expect day and night cycles with the dynamic weather system, of course with next-gen graphics. It's nice to see the improvements in terms of lighting and in terms of behavior of the NPCs during the night. We saw the combat and a little bit of stealth before, but as it was said by the developers, the other main pillar of the franchise, navigation, has been overhauled too, especially in terms of flow. Not only because of the famous control descent with which now the character can safely parkour down towards the ground, but also because of how fluid the movements appear, like what we can see now as Arno seems to be climbing the dome of the beautifully recreated Hotel National des Invalides.
In the second part of this video we're going to take a look at Arnaud's training. In this video we can see Arnaud and his assassin instructor discussing before the beginning of one of Arnaud's training sessions. As we already know from the Project Widow site, the instructor is called Pierre Belek, a strong believer in the Brotherhood who in the past took part in the Seven Years War. Yes, the same Seven Years War that acts as a background in Assassin's Creed Rogue. In AC Unity more than ever, Arno's training mirrors the player's training in getting used to the new controls in the first hours of the game. In the video we are able to see the tutorial for the smoke bombs, one of the many ranged weapons of the game, among which the players will also find stun and gas grenades and the iconic phantom blade. As we already saw in the past iterations of the franchise, the tutorial is not just a way to introduce the player to the game mechanics, but also to the game world. In this brief video we can see Arnaud noticing the Patriots or the Aggressors as the developers have called them in the past months. This is one of the three factions that the player will find in Paris and which, according to past news, will attack Arnaud no matter what. The other two factions will be the National Guard, who will act like the police in town, and the crowd, who might lend a hand to Arnaud when he needs it. Careful, Pistol! You'll hurt someone! Arnaud's training session also leads him to practice his parkour skills not only on Paris's rooftops, but also inside a house and even on trees, keeping the skills that Edward Kenway and Connor had before him. As mentioned in the news that came out in the past days, Arnaud's training will be completed within the first three sequences of the game. What we are seeing right now is a cutscene at the end of Arnaud's training with a sort of meeting between the high-ranking Parisian assassins. There's Mirabeau, who appears to be the leader of the assassin, there's an unknown woman, there's Belek, there is what seems to be General Alexandre Dumas and of course there's Arnaud. There's a bit of a spoiler in what we see, but what stands out is Arnaud who tries to support his ideas even when these are against Mirabeau, who believes that Arnaud is on a quest of revenge rather than redemption. So, will Arnaud be able to follow the path of the eagle after his training? We'll just have to wait for a month to know for sure. Confuse your personal vendetta with a sound strategy. If he wants to kill Templars, let him kill Templars. I've taught him all I can. Boys, ready? 